Hi everyone. So it's no secret that not many people like the 1998 American version of Godzilla. In fact, it's so despised that when Godzilla Final Wars came out in Japan in 2004, pardon my language, but there is basically a scene that equated to a cinematic bitch slap where the Japanese Godzilla barbecued the American version less than 30 seconds into their fight. Not only that, but Toho has officially referred to our Godzilla as simply Zilla and made it clear that it is not the true king of monsters. Yes, Toho was so insulted that they retconned the American version of Godzilla into their own continuity just so they could say they hated it. Since then, there was only one more Godzilla movie released in the United States, Godzilla 2000. After that, the only other giant monster we saw in theaters was King Kong and the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park 3, and Smog from The Hobbit The Desolation of Smog. And of course, there was the generic monster from Cloverfield and the generic monsters from Pacific Rim. But still, none of them compared to the king of all monsters, so it pleases me to welcome him back into theaters with Godzilla. That's it, there's no subtitle or anything, it's just Godzilla. Welcome to Short and to the Point, where I review movies in 5 minutes or less, or your money back. Our story begins ominously in the year 1999, where a team of scientists has discovered a giant skeleton. Hey, maybe it's the skeleton of the 1998 Godzilla. Whatever it is, it has left behind two eggs. One of the eggs has already hatched, but whatever was inside it is nowhere to be found. The scene then switches to a Japanese nuclear plant, where some sort of disaster destroys it and results in the entire surrounding area being quarantined. This was a pretty enjoyable scene to watch, as we do not see what is causing the destruction. All we know is that our hero, Joe Brody, played by Brian Cranston, and a bunch of other people will be screwed if he does not act fast. We then flash forward 15 years later, and we discover that Joe believes that something about the plant disaster was covered up, and he brings his son Ford, played by Aaron Kickass Johnson, along for the ride to investigate. Aaron is no match for Brian in terms of their acting abilities in this film, but that's mostly because Ford is the more level-headed of the two, and as such that doesn't give Aaron a lot of material to act with, but his character is likable enough. Our heroes soon discover that not only was the monster from the Philippines responsible for the destruction of the plant, but it has also been encased in a cocoon for the past 15 years and has been feeding off the surrounding radiation ever since. After a few more scenes of exposition which are kept interesting by the semi-tense atmosphere, the monster finally emerges and boy was it worth the wait. The CGI on it is excellent and it is awesome to see this thing rampaging throughout the facility. Of course, there is nothing that the army can do to fight this monster, so this looks like a job for Godzilla. The only problem is that the film takes its sweet time to actually show Godzilla. Now let me be clear, when Godzilla first shows up and gives his trademark roar, there is no question that he is the king of all monsters. However, since he is being used as a means to an end, that means he is not the primary focus of the film. And given how this is the first Godzilla movie in 10 years, that's probably not what the audience expected. Or wanted. 
However, I did like how there was some characterization given to the evil monster to push it past simply being a redshirt monster for Godzilla to fight and kill. But this is a double-edged sword as that means that time has to be devoted to setting up what the monster is up to, which takes screen time away from Godzilla. But hey, at least it's not a boring setup as there is plenty for the monster to wreck until Godzilla arrives. Speaking of the monsters, there are some scenes in the movie where it looks like the monsters are about to fight, but then it cuts to the humans. Now before I go any further, I will say that I did like how the story put in effort to keep the humans from being entirely superfluous to the story, but this is also a double-edged sword, because during the climax, that means it has to switch from the monsters fighting to the humans doing whatever it is they're doing, and then back to the monsters. And that can get a little distracting, especially since nobody ever goes to a Godzilla movie to save the humans. Again, at least the humans are doing something important, as opposed to just running around trying to not get killed. Now when the monsters finally do fight, it wasn't quite the badass clash of the titans that I was expecting, but it is satisfying, and there are some truly epic moments in the fight that you will never forget. Now if there's anything in this movie that I am not mixed on, it's Godzilla's backstory. Not all of it really makes that much sense, especially when it deals with why Godzilla is going after the evil monster, and it is made worse because Ken Watanabe delivers all of this exposition in a completely serious manner, thus making it sound even more unbelievable. Yes, a movie about a giant lizard somehow has unbelievable moments, which in itself is hard to believe. Speaking of Ken Watanabe, his acting is kind of limited, but there is an authority to his line delivery, so I'll let that pass, and the movie does benefit from its serious tone otherwise. So overall, I think Godzilla is a satisfying film. It doesn't go quite the extra mile into truly awesome territory, but it is a step in the right direction. The CGI done to bring Godzilla and his enemy to life was awesome, and it does make them look like true forces of nature to be reckoned with. And while the story does go out of its way to keep everything relevant, I did think it's mostly balanced, and it was paced well enough that I did not get bored. And though the humans are not groundbreaking characters, they are at the very least not the kind of characters that we want to see get killed. I'd give it 7 nuclear explosions out of a possible 10, and I do recommend it for a theatrical viewing, as that is the only way to experience the return of Godzilla. He might have to share his screen time, but still, when it's all said and done, there is no doubt in our minds that he is the king of all monsters. This has been short and to the point, and I review movies in 5 minutes or less, or your money back. Now, if you'll excuse me... Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go and get this thing fixed. I will see you all soon. Bye.